We are back to talk 90 Day Fiance. It feels to me, Beatrice, like this is the penultimate episode, which means... That's a good word. I don't know that word. You don't know that word? No, I love teaching you words. It means a second to last. Wow. Yeah. So it looks feels like the penultimate to me. I feel like next week, it looks like we've got some weddings that are trying to take I place. so. Yeah, so we've, we either have one more or two more, but we are here now yes. to talk about this week's episode. So take it away, toots. All right. And I just have to say, I have to make a quick note that this episode felt extraordinarily long. Like yeah. it was like I'm in a parallel dimension. Yeah, like at the this. slowest increment of time. Oh, like you're in a timeless geez. space, a nebula, if you will. <laughs> The egg of life. Is time even passing? Is time even real? I'm like watching this. When you're this. watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> I think I WhatsApped you. And I'm you like, did. I feel like I started this at 11 a.m. and it's now 5 p.m. and I'm <laughs> only 30 minutes in. Yeah. What's happening right now? I was watching it last night and I'm like sober. I'm like, I've got to watch this sober. Shocking. So I can pay attention. Yeah. The only hour <laughs> of my day I was sober. And I'm watching this and I'm like, am I, I'm not high. Like I, it, this feels really long. It just felt crazy to me but it was I mean it was funny there were some funny moments there were but I mean it it is just it's a regurgitation of like the same storyline and we've said this ourselves we've regurgitated this ourselves so I don't I won't say it too much but like it just it's the same thing yes we've just been in the same moment the same night in some of the same day in some of these Every relationships. And I'm like, oh, good grief. Can we move it? It's like the sister wives. I know. It takes three years For to real. get a fucking season. And by the time we do, we already know everything that's happened. I know exactly. we're the status of every single one of these couples. I know. Yes. That's the thing about it. Although I did send you today <laughs> Rob's uncensored oh OnlyFans photos today. To remind I you. I mean, I feel like some of you might not know. And so let us remind We're going to remind you. <laughs> so this is now in your consciousness yeah but rob of rob and sophie had an only fans um a few years ago yeah which felt like it was created for the male gaze uh-huh. the homosexual the homosexual gaze which is yeah. great. We, great we love ourselves the homosexual we have a homosexual in our a midst token homosexual. we do we do love a homosexual but yeah. so we had an only fans and um we had i had found a picture of Rob spreading his cakes okay for the camera but it It was was blotted out it was censored somewhat Mm -hmm. I posted that on Patreon because I know you're sick just like me okay (laughs) I know you're sick just like me I know you wanted to see it on Patreon but I couldn't find the actual booty hole I found it I I didn't look long though because I was not (laughs) necessarily wanting to see the booty hole but you found it today well people were talking about it on reddit Somebody posted a picture of Rob and they're like, I just, every time I see this dude, I think about how we've seen his bare anus. And I was like, oh my God, are there actual (laughs) pictures out? So I was reading the comments and people were commenting on Reddit. You can go look up the thread if you want. I'm not promoting this at all. It exists on the internet. You can look it up. Is it 90 Day Fiance Uncensored? Yes. Okay, that's the subreddit. There's a post on there and there's comments telling you how to find it. But I went and looked (laughs) because my morbid curiosity, I'm like, I have to see this. (laughs) And <laughs> and then she wrote me. She's like, um, by the way, those photographs, I found them. And I'm like, um, link, please. Send them to me so right now. So she sent me the link. I went and looked. I'm like, I can't see it. I'm a boomer. Like, uh. And I'm like, you're going to have to screenshot this shit. And she's like, okay. Then I saw them while you you're setting up to screenshots. <laughs> then to- I just scrolled a little lower. I'm like, <gasps> I saw the dickly. The big old dick. The balls. I mean, it's big. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, big. It but I mean, kind, kind of, of comes weird. up like this. It's like thick. Oh, <laughs> it's like thick down here, and then it kind of gets thin like that. No, but I like, mean, it was like thin at the base, was and it? then it gets thick. Oh man. Okay, that's yeah. kind of interesting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I asked you, I was like, "Are you aroused?" And I'm like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> and then I saw the booty hole, honey. And when I tell you, he's spreading his cheeks for everybody, for God, for country, for man and woman to see. Yep. I saw everything. I saw his lower intestine. Uh-huh. I saw his life purpose. Yep. I saw his hopes for his future. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. And there was something in that anus too. What was that? It was a little a silver butt plug with a diamond on top of it in his booty hole while he's spreading out. And you can see his balls and stuff. It's all shaved though, at least. 
<laughs> I mean, so yeah, we we, yeah. we did revisit <laughs> Rob's OnlyFans and we saw those pictures. God bless Honestly, it. Honestly, it's the only entertaining thing about their storyline because them, Rob and Sophie bore me like so It's much. also the only time he was gainfully employed. <laughs> actually making money because those gay guys on that board were here oh, for it they're like oh sure. my god that's everything i mean he's an objectively attractive ish man kind of for some people i guess not my type but right. you know he's something yeah and for some gay men i'm sure I mean, compared to cleon i mean i'd rather see rob's butthole <laughs> or than sam Clay. yeah oh sam yeah so His but we are being mean promoted. you're being so mean i oh, well stop listen. being mean he put it on we the could internet be nicer. he put it on the internet for everybody to see i'm gonna talk about it oh god i'm gonna talk about it <laughs> <laughs> i see that you are anyway let's get into okay this let's get into the episode, episode. We start with... Well, but we found out that Jasmine has an OnlyFans, yes! too. I looked it up because I was watching this episode. I'm like, she's gotta... I was watching it with your daughter, actually. Right. And she was like, she's gotta have an OnlyFans. hundred uh, percent. And she does. Well, and she should. I mean, but I'm wondering if Gino features on there. <gasps> I'm just wondering. Like if she's peeing on Gino right now yeah. as we speak? Or like if they do things together or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, from her OnlyFans, I did not subscribe to it because it's like $18 a month or something. Yeah, like nobody like, has time for that, honey. No. You know that Paul and Karini both had an OnlyFans too. What? Paul and Karini? She doesn't, she doesn't Paul? know that Paul had an I, OnlyFans. Not only does stop. Paul have an OnlyFans, I don't know if it's still active, stop. but he was doing stuff with other guys. <gasps> Wasn't Karini doing stuff with other guys? No. Paul had his whole out. Paul was what? doing OnlyFans, bitch. What? Yes. I mean, oh I'm not God. here to judge nobody or kink shame because, you know, I'm... mommy's had her life experiences, if you will. Girl, I'm but deceased. Yeah. That yeah. is insane. I'm to sure me. you can find some of that as well. Um, if you you know, to get exactly. your monocle out and go look at You know, that's exactly what I'm going to do when I get home from th tonight. I'm going to be looking. Screenshots. Oh, for sure. I'm going to send them to you. Okay, thank you. I need to see it all. <laughs> I want to see what his dingling Have looks like. Have you ever like. seen like Nikocado Avocado and his OnlyFans? No. Which is degeneracy only supreme. Is it just him Where eating Where have food? you been? How am I Look, I'm not the Gen up. X older woman? Clearly very beautiful <laughs> for her age. How am I out here knowing that Nikocado Avocado and Paul have OnlyFans where they're doing like leagues of butt stuff? Stop. So much fucking butt stuff. I just, you know, I just, I guess I don't look for it. I don't okay, think well, about it. Maybe that's the difference between you and oh, me. Man, you're searching for it while you're reading your I mean, smut. No, listen, I'm up on YouTube and said, well, I mean, I hear about things, you know, I hear my about it on the street God. and everything. I'm listening. Oh my God. The well, the Reddit's saying? probably talking about it too. Yes. yes. I did not know Nakato Avocado had an only Honey. It's just him eating and doing nasty shit, isn't it? No, it's him getting f by his Stop. boyfriend. Stop. I'm sorry. Should I beep that out? No. <laughs> just getting railed and eating and with his CPAP on and stuff. It's just oh the most God, terrible Oh my God, that is debaucherous. I know, it's fantastic. What is wrong with this world? It's everything. Oh my God. I am. Can you write that down in the timestamp yeah. so I can beep that out? Because I don't think YouTube's going to appreciate it. <laughs> they're going to demonetize us. <laughs> we just got that good old monetization uh, and they're going to demonetize us for well, me saying that. All right, let's get into the episode. Okay. Well, we start with Gino and Jasmine. Jasmine has an OnlyFans. Let's remind you. Yes. Um, I wonder if Gino's on there. Please, somebody go subscribe and let I mean, me know. Let us know. But in this episode, for some reason, it's still 42 days until their wedding. And so they got to go fucking wedding dress shopping. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? Some of the other cast members did this episodes ago. Right. Like, why are we just doing this with them? It's a whole nothing burger. Gino's fucking broke. Doesn't want to spend a lot of money on a wedding dress because he spent $4,000 on... Well, he gave four thousand dollars to Gino, or Jasmine, uh, Jasmine, for a wedding dress, and then she used it on her ass implants. Right. So now he's fucking broke, and he's like, "Can we keep it under a thousand dollars?" And Gino finds or Jasmine, Jesus, <laughs> Jasmine yeah. finds a wedding dress that's like five thousand dollars or something. Right. And Gino just looks pained. Right. I mean, it's really embarrassing. I mean, I don't think there's any woman who wants to go dress shopping with her. Uh, betrothed and have him say how much is that though yeah. what's the cost on that though like it's well. super cringe and embarrassing but at the same time if you can't afford it you can't afford it yeah. i do know that at this time my husband walked through um, <laughs> the living room and, and he stopped and listened to jasmine and he's like wow that woman sounds like she's speaking through a kazoo <laughs> 
And she does. <laughs> she does. That's perfect. She sounds like she's speaking through a oh. kazoo. <laughs> He's like, that's great. Then he went on to take his his piss. But <laughs> yeah, I thought the dresses were beautiful. Yeah. Obviously, she's got a banging body. Jasmine, yes. I think, is very pretty. Yes. Um, he couldn't afford anything. Then they went and looked at venues. and Yeah, they looked at a barn venue. They thought it was very beautiful. Although okay. Jasmine is lying to Gino and saying that she's like, well, I don't know because I still don't have a good relationship with your family because they think I'm using you. Right. Which I'm totally not. But she okay. is. <laughs> but for what? I mean, what could she possibly be using Gino for? He no I, longer has a job. Yeah. He's the kind of person that shits in a toilet and doesn't flush it. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of money. He can't afford to get you a wedding dress. Like, what kind of fucking gold do you think you're digging over well, here? Well, she told his family when they go and have dinner with them that he's a babe. Well, she was being facetious because everybody knows that he's not a babe. I mean, when he's <laughs> sitting there while she's trying on dresses he looks like a fucking gargoyle <laughs> people are already making he looks memes like of a it. gargoyle in a fedora <laughs> just like, standing jesus there jesus christ all humpty down like like dude he looks like um Gru from uh <laughs> <laughs> despicable me yes he does a little bit i'm yeah. like i can't with you dude well what did you think of the dinner where jasmine talks to the family because um before they really even say anything to her she just kind of launches into like it is really important for me to have a relationship with you guys because I don't have family in America uh -huh. and um, all my family is in Panama yeah. and I really want to to feel like I have somebody here. She starts crying, which means your mother-in-law starts crying. Were you really? I did. I started, I believed her and oh I have a soft God. spot for Jasmine even though she's absolutely mental. She's insane. I feel like she wants love. All she wants is real deep abiding love for even sure. though she's a hurricane and I felt if I was just like if I was in that family sitting at that table I would like get up I would go hug her I'm like girl yeah. let's go get cocktails I'm your, I'm your friend I'm here for you. I would be Helping this woman who's just crying out for love and family. No? Yeah. You don't feel the same? Well, I mean, I, I can understand why Gino's family is like s skeptical of her. But I think Gino's family is kind of fucked up. Because every time they have a conversation with Jasmine about Gino and like about their relationship and stuff, his family is always like, well... We're just worried that you're taking advantage of our ugly, broke down <laughs> cousin or nephew right. or whatever. Like, they're always putting him down. Like, Gino's fucking awkward. Gino's fucking weird. Like, how Gino's could he get the with worst. you? <laughs> Why would you, babe, want to be with him? Your beautiful That's boobs and booty and everything. Why? Like, you got it going. Like, why are you with this shit? It makes no sense. But we love him. We're looking out for him and his ugly ass. Like, right. that's just how they are every time. Right. So I'm like, his family kind of sucks. Yeah, they do. I mean, everybody sucks. And even Jasmine sucks a little. But yeah. I thought that that was very endearing. And I loved that they accepted her. Yes. And that they were good to her. And that they explained their position. And mm -hmm. everything was right in the land. <laughs> we're totally seeing these people on oh, Happily yeah. Ever They're not getting married new. next week. We've still got to wait for that. 100%. Um, next, we get to Clayton and Anna Lee, who are the highlight of this episode. Yeah. Because if you recall... Anneli had a bachelorette party with a streeper. A streeper, honey, with and a pink bow toe. Big old just bow toe. winding that bow toe around, mm -hmm. dancing and gyrating. And Anneli with her those face. selfies. And she oh. was living her best life. She certainly wasn't acting like she didn't want it. No. She was so excited. And I thought that. She actually asked Brandy for a stripper. She like, did. She wanted a stripper, right? Yes, she did. Okay, so. Yes, even though Clayton didn't want a stripper. He said, por favor, no stripper. Did he say por favor? He said, please? I yes. thought he said, absolutely no goddamn stripper. Well, he did say Or that. I'm going to stomp my toddler feet, <laughs> throw his... myself a toddler tantrum. <laughs> a little baby diaper yeah. tantrum. Only my pamper pee. Yes. No, in his um, talking head with her, he was like, I said, por favor, no strippers. Right. That's what he said. But then we get into this episode before they have the big old talk. Annalie has not told him that she had a stripper at her bachelorette party yet. And we see Clayton working out in the front yard on a towel. Is that what he was doing? <laughs> Sounds like he was Squeaking. practicing for his dance audition. <laughs> Like just yeah. jumping back and down and squatting. If you ever want to know what I do at the gym, it's that. Is it? <laughs> awesome. That's how I get my physique. Fantastic. 
And so he's working out, I guess, because he wants to lose 10 pounds before the next day, which is their wedding. And Annalie comes out and she's like, yeah, so I got to talk to you. Um, I had a stripper at my bachelorette party. Yeah. But it was all Brandy's idea. Right. That bitch. Yeah. She put it up and I just couldn't say no. If there's one woman I wouldn't want to surreptitiously throw under the bus, it would probably be Brandy. For because sure. Brandy looks like she would throw hands. Yeah. And definitely not put up with it. But at the same time, I think maybe she'd do Analia solid and just be like, get over it, Clayton. Uh, for real. You little bitch baby. <laughs> You little man, baby. Listen, I'm worried because Clayton commented on your post today I on Instagram. Know. Hi, which Clayton. was so interesting. You put up a graphic of like what an anim- anamorphous. <laughs> an an- I'm changing into a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't tag him. No, I didn't. So he was searching with his yeah. little baby fingers on his keyboard while he was playing World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. And he found your post within less than an hour. I know. And he commented and on he it. he fucking and commented on it. And I wonder if he's going to listen Dude, to, oh my God. I was Clayton, literally. Let me just apologize in sorry, advance. Sorry. <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> but like, I was literally telling your daughter this today. I was like, he commented on our shit. Like, what if he listens to our episodes where we're talking about his pamper dick <laughs> and his tiny <laughs> And his tiny feet. And I'm going to be talking about his tiny legs dangling off that bed because they didn't reach the ground. Because he's so small. My God. I can't. It's like Lily Tomlin in the big chair. You wouldn't know the reference. No. But like she's sitting in his big chair and her fucking feet are just dangling off the edge. Like he's so little. I even posted a story today. I forgot where I was talking about his bad haircut. You did? He probably saw it. And that's why we need to be nicer. Well, but I'm sorry. We we have to ask ourselves, are we helping the world or are we hurting it? Listen, (laughs) (laughs) I'm just a human being with eyes. We're just trying to laugh. I mean, who cares? You're on TV. It doesn't fucking matter. I know people are talking shit about us right now and I don't care. And it's rude. Clayton, you put yourself out there. But then what you did, Clayton, is you acted a fucking fool. Like a little baby. So your sister Brandy, who nobody can say no to, Mm -hmm. sister's going to do whatever she wants to do. She hires this broke down (laughs) middle-aged stripper with a pink bow toe. And you hear about it and you immediately go into your incel insecurity, Mm -hmm. right? Like incel curity. (laughs) (laughs) You get into your incel curity because I think he's wondering like, well, did she see his dick? Yeah. Well, did she like his dick? Yeah. Well, is she comparing in her mind and in her consciousness the middle-aged dick with my dick? The answer is yes. And she, absolutely. <laughs> that's what she's doing. And what does she think about? So it's all driven by insecurity. Yes. And he's getting mad. And so his mouth hangs open and his eyes get really dark and he's getting all mad. <laughs> he's getting so and triggered. I'm just laughing at it him. It's so funny. Oh, God. He's five one and he's mad. Oh, my God. He's so mad. And he's like, did you like it? Did you touch him? Did he yeah, touch Papa, you? Yeah, Papa, I liked it. Yes, I yes, did. I took selfies. Me. I twerked up on it. I took videos of it. I was it. all trying to feel up on yeah. it. I'm going to dream about it later tonight while you're fucking yes. me. <laughs> not going to be thinking about yours. I'm going to be thinking about that, man. Now that I know that there's other penises out there yeah. that are human-sized. <laughs> you're not Fiona Sausages. No offense, Clayton, if you're Ooh. watching. We're just having, taking the piss. We're just having fun. That's all we're doing. Get over it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, what a little misogynist. I know. He's freaking out. Annalie starts crying about okay. it. And can we talk about this? Yeah. Because her reaction's a little ridiculous, too. She's just like, well, what's the solution? Because I already had it. And like, get over it. And you're just going to keep yeah. questioning me over and over yeah. again. I'm just going to fly back to Peru. Right. And so she doesn't deal with conflict. <laughs> Not at she all. She gets up and she walks away. Like, she puts up with a little bit of his interrogation. Um, But then she gets up and she walks away. And so then he follows her and then she gets up from there and walks away and he follows her. And he's always trying to fucking touch her. I know. Like put his arm down her leg. And I'm just like, get off me, you little fucking barnacle. (laughs) Get up off me. And she's just like, leave me alone. I'm just, you know, there's, you're going to want all the details. You're going to want to just keep on talking this to over death. And, over again. and I don't want to live my life this way. And I would rather go home than to deal with this. So... On its face, that's really unfair. Totally. Because he has every right to be hurt. Yeah. Because that was a boundary that they had, right? That was something that they agreed upon. Correct. She willfully broke it because she asked for it. Yeah. Right? So she knew it was going to happen. So Clayton has every right to be upset. And you have some splaining to do, Lucy. For sure. You can't just cry and say, okay, let's not get married because you're being a bitch boy about it. 
she has no communication ability. No, no, not at all. Yeah. And it's not fair. She wasn't fair to Clayton. But I mean, I like that because I don't like Clayton. No. And, but at the same time, like he's proving her right by also continually asking questions. Like, did you like it? And did he touch you? And yeah, he's like, he well, we need to talk about it even more right. for a while until he's I feel going okay about it. to go crazy. He's yes. going to have intrusive thoughts. Yeah. He's going to have a hard time. And I guess you were telling me that he actually had an ex-girlfriend who cheated on him. So he's definitely got trauma. Yes. And that's probably why he's reacting this way because he feels like it's in some way akin to cheating when it's not it's just a fucking stripper and she was drunk on a bus and he's waving his dick in her face so how would you feel if that happened to your wife i mean if i straight up told her i'm like look i don't want any strippers like that's really not something i want for you and for us and if she did it anyway i'd be a little upset but i'd be like okay what's the context like did somebody get you a stripper even though you told them no strippers and did you stay and did you touch the girl? Then maybe we'd have a problem. Right. But it wouldn't be something I'd be fucking freaking out about or acting like it was cheating. I would just right. be like, well, that was lame, but whatever. Yeah. See, if my husband got a lap dance, I would be fucking pressed. Yeah. I would have a problem with that. And if I knew my husband touched a stripper, I would be like, what? The we fuck? have a fundamental fucking problem. And right. we're not moving. We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything until we work this out. So I can see his point. I think it's fair. I think that she's manipulative by crying and walking away and refusing to talk about it yeah and i think if the tables were turned and he had been around a stripper i think she would have been really pissed totally so i think she's a hypocrite but at the same time it's so toxic like how can you even keep up no with what's going on for real and i'm just like waiting for if there's going to be a tell-all because you know they're going to show that footage i know and you know they're going to show her taking selfies and shit Oh, my God. Well, he asks her, is there anything else that I should know? And she's no. like, no. Oh my I'm God. like, okay, oh, well, because he's going to see the footage just like Jasmine is going to see the footage of Gino oh at God, his strip. Oh, I forgot about yes. that, Yes, bitch. She's that's going to freak out. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. It'll be the strip club segment, honey. Yes. Just like Last Resort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's pretty much it with them because we leave off with a cliffhanger. Like if Annalie's going to go back to Peru or oh, not. No. Which she's not because she's here for the green card. <laughs> green card goblin. For sure. Then we get to Rob and Sophie. And I'm going to be real with you. I took notes. Yeah. But I barely remember what happened with them. Well, they get back. He goes to pick her up from the hotel. Yeah. Right. And so they're in the car. They're having a conversation. And she's apologizing for not taking his side and stuff like that. They get mm-hmm. back to the hovel with the detached bathroom. <laughs> and Rob's like, can we go outside and have a, have a talk since there's not enough space here for us to both sit and talk in this room? <laughs> and so they go outside and she brings up the fact that he was passive, aggressively vague posting all night on his dumb Twitter or Instagram. Like a loser. Like a total high school millennial loser insecure immature bitch boy baby yep and she's like you know it's obviously geared to me and he's like well what are you talking about no No, it's not it's like a general statement that i just feel inside of me everybody else nothing to do with you okay whatever how old are you again 30 something you're 32 she's 23 what a loser serious like who fucking does that nowadays i don't know i Rob. was re- i was reading some people talking about that shit like that is so lame dude and then to act like you weren't doing it because you don't want your pride and ego to get hurt right and because he has a fundamental inability to just be able to apologize to her yep. she's already apologizing for things that she may or may not have to apologize for right. quite frankly because her mother was the one who was maybe a little rude but she's doing whatever she needs to do to make things right but he can't give her even a little bit of leeway and apologize no for posting all night and for being a dick and for not texting back and for being an asshole no and he like he'll say i'm sorry but he says it in such a fucking attitude he's like well i'm sorry that i made you feel that way like it's not a real fucking apology he's such an asshole and i kind of feel bad for sophie but at the same time i'm like girl like you're seeing all these red flags in front of you they are blaring red that dick game cannot be that good maybe it is we did see the picture I i mean it's front loaded it seems like it's a nice size i don't know <laughs> i would say so yeah you think so yeah but i mean it's kind of got weird proportions kind of but i don't know maybe sophie loves it and if she loves it i love that for her that's great but, but... i just couldn't put up with such an immature 
person. I mean, I've dated somebody like that who's Ugh. just such a baby about everything so and needy. always so offended by everything Ugh. and makes a fucking drama and an issue out of the littlest things. I'm like, God, it is exhausting. I can't. Nobody wants to live that way. And that can't be like attractive either. No. You're like wanting a partner to Complete be like. boner killer. Yes. I mean, he's just so annoying. And then they ultimately end up like, I guess, kind of making up, forgiving each other. But really that means Sophie just apologizing profusely and taking blame. Well, and she blame. has to cry. Yes. She has to cry before he gives her an inch. Which is just so fucked up. And yeah. she knows it's fucked up. She knows that in every single one of their arguments, she always has to apologize just for it to end. And I'm like, girl, mm-hmm. get out. And it seems like in the preview, maybe they will. I don't know. Because he fights with her mom again. Right. They're boring. Then we get to Sam and Citra. Yes. Who are preparing for their wedding. And they have to go to the mosque because they got to do the islamic wedding first yes he's got to convert and then they got to get married at the temple in front of right the priest and then they'll do their american slash christian slash atheist alien wedding <laughs> <laughs> and let me just say because i've trashed sam quite a bit on this podcast for his alleged substance abuse and like how he deceived citra with not filing for his diversion and all the shitty stuff that he did do and also not telling the truth about what actually happened with his arrest. Like I've definitely, and so have you, we've laid into Sam and we've made fun of his Marriott marionette (laughs) body and all that stuff. Like we've had a, we, again, we've taken a piss with Sam, but I felt in this scene when he's going through his conversion and his father shows up and he's taking it seriously. I felt like it was wholesome. I felt like, He loves Citra. Yeah. I feel like he's doing this because he actually authentically loves Citra. And besides it being interesting to me, because I've really never seen any uh, ceremony like this or a Mm -hmm. conversion, I thought it was very fascinating personally. I felt like he was there with the right intention for Citra. And I thought that that was kind of beautiful. Am I a big sap? You are a total sap. Okay. But I love you that. Okay. I love you for that. I mean, for me, I was like, okay, it is kind of sweet because he is converting for the woman that he loves. But then he says things like earlier in their segment, he was talking about, oh, you know, it's been really hard for me because we haven't been able to have sex. Mm-hmm. And so like, I'm really waiting for that. And I don't want to pressure you into having sex on our wedding night. But like, I'm, you know, I'm kind of waiting for that. Right. It's been a long time and I'm just, you know, anxious to get that going. And then Citra's like, I'm a virgin. Yeah. So I hope it doesn't hurt and I'm nervous. And so I'm like, those kinds of elements of Sam bother me because I do think that that funnel, like that kind of influences his want to convert and like want to marry her because he wants to fuck her. I'm sure. I think he wants a full and complete relationship with Citra because he loves her. And that absolutely includes sex. Yeah. I think that, you know, he probably doesn't have the capacity to like know how to take care of a woman who's a virgin and like what that whole thing is going to be. Like Uh he just doesn't know it. But I don't think that he's that much different from most men. Like I don't think most men would know how to do that. I think most men can't wait for the the sex or for the wedding night. So I don't think he's atypical in that way. Therefore, not a bad person. But I mean, I... It's just kind of gross to me. Though. I wish, like, yeah, I wish he was more sensitive yeah. and was thinking about that. Yeah, that's the only thing with him. And then I'm like, you got an OnlyFans. So like, what are you doing? Oh dude? God, that's just crazy to you me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so Sam, if you didn't watch last time or if you didn't listen last time, Sam just started an OnlyFans and the inference for the casual reader is that it's going to be sexual in nature, certainly with adult content. So like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you just converted to Islam. You married this virginal beautiful girl Mm -hmm. help me out here yeah with your motives and in this episode her dad is literally talking to sam before they go and do the conversion he's like please don't defile my daughter like please don't destroy her take care of her don't waste her don't waste her and sam's like no i won't i love her and he does say something really sweet to herman he's like you know the goal is to be like you and your wife because you guys are the perfect example and that kind of got Herman a little misty so that was sweet Mm -hmm. so I'm like I'm I'm hoping that Sam can be a good guy and I hope that he can treat Citra well correct and his dad seems really sweet like I like that his dad showed up for his conversion did he wear shades inside of the mosque Okay. His shades were fucking funny to me, dude. I, like, like you look like an alien. Off, he does. He's funny, but he showed up, and his mom didn't. Nope. So fuck his mom. He's she's drinking somewhere. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But that's pretty much it. Like they get married after he says his conversion. I think it was called the Shahada. I'm not 
pronouncing that right because I'm a fucking white girl but Mm -hmm. he converts they get married in the islamic temple it's very sweet herman cries Mm -hmm. and it's like very wholesome and then i think next episode we'll get to the american wedding yeah so i'm excited for that and then we get to manuel and ashley yeah they're the final one okay they're kind of boring yeah the first segment they start with like a facetime call with his mom which is sweet but i'm like wasn't Ashley saying this whole entire season that she's never even met his family, doesn't know anything about his family? Yeah, and it seemed to me that they had spoken before. They yeah. seemed to have some kind of a relationship, Ashley and the mom. And then Ashley started crying, but somebody pointed out on the subreddit that there were actually no tears, mm-hmm. just like dry Robin Brown eyes, uh-huh. just like pretending to cry and feeling all emotional about it. But that was a nice moment. Like Manuel, I do believe, really wants his family to be there, anybody from his family to be there to witness his marriage. But was he married before? I know he's got kids. Do you, was he married to somebody else before? I think the talk has been that like, well, like the rumors have been through this season that he's got a wife. Oh. But I like don't know if that's on true. Legal wife? Yeah. I don't know if that's true or if like he's just got like a baby mama down, you know, okay. I don't know. All right. I'm not entirely sure if some raccoons can figure that out and let us know. That'd be great. Right. Because we don't know. But obviously we're like in the run up to the wedding and um, we're scouting out the beach and she's super excited. Ashley's super excited. And every time I see her in her interstitial when she's wearing that blue dress and her like red hair, I'm like, oh God, she's so pretty. Her eyes are so she's beautiful. She's so pretty. Yeah. But she gets word that there's tropical storms approaching. And I guess she didn't realize when she was booking her wedding on a beach in Florida during hurricane season that there was the potential that that wouldn't work out to her benefit. Girl, I'm like, how do you not think about that? I don't know. When you That's think, crazy. I'm like, when I think of Florida, I always think of hurricanes because mm-hmm. they always get hit with hurricanes. They always have fucking storms and shit. So I'm like, what are you even doing? She's like, well, I don't live in Florida, so I don't think about I that. I know, but I don't live in Florida, and I know that. Yeah. And I have CNN, and I Hello? understand when these hurricanes roll through the state and how devastating it is. Like, okay. But she is, I mean, she planned this thing right down to the last fucking minute. They're getting married on like day 89 or day 90 of the, the K1. The Pisces moon. The Pisces full moon. Yeah. She wanted to get married as close to that Why? as possible. What's, what does that mean? I don't know. Because well, you're our astrologist. I don't know. Well, they're both cancer rising. So like okay. last episode when they were at Niagara Falls, they're like, oh my God, all the water energy. Right. Uh. So <laughs> they're probably like very connected to that. She's a witch. So she's probably thinking like, it's going to be so amazing. Okay. But it's full moon in Pisces, and then you have a hurricane on your wedding. Right. That's kind of crazy. Well, the fact of the matter is that this couple and their storyline is already over. Like, (laughs) we've just been in the same situation this entire time for the last three to four weeks. Yeah. You're fighting, and then you're boning, and Uh then you're planning your wedding. And so I assume in the next episode, we're going to be getting to that wedding, and we'll see if there's a hurricane. Probably not. She's probably going to get married on the beach. It's going to be beautiful. And then we're done. Yeah congratulations yes like they were very boring this whole season yeah i mean they're sweet i think they do love each other i don't think he's sweet i don't think he's very nice i think she's naive but But, i mean as long as they have bomb ass sex i guess i mean and she was rumored to be pregnant right earlier in the season so i'm like are you gonna be they're gonna have a baby (gasps) oh my god that'd be a cute baby did you see citrus tummy because i know i asked you if you had looked because she looks in her like talking head when she's wearing the pink blouse she looks kind of preg- I prego i hope not i hope not yikes oh my god can you imagine what that yeah. kid looks like uh, well, i'm not gonna body shame no don't but the child has a great chance for fantastic from uh, citra aesthetics <laughs> from citra yes because yeah. she's gorgeous she is gorgeous and that's pretty much it for this episode it was very boring but we get to the preview yeah sophie's mom and robert arguing again, again. Gino and Jasmine get married. Jasmine's sad that her family's not there, but Gino's family is there. Sam and Citra have their American wedding, but then he has to find a new officiant right. within one hour of the who's wedding. Who's not a priest. Who's not, uh, yeah, not Christian, because he didn't think about that. Right. I'm like, dude. You need me. I'm an efficient. Yes. Yes. Like, you could have your fucking dad get yeah. ordained online. I mean, in 10 minutes. Literally. That's what they'll probably and do. And wasn't it free? Yeah, when you do uh, that? no, it was like 30 bucks. Oh, so yeah, then pretty they cheap. You can do that. Mm-hmm. And then Nikki flies back to America and they ki- her and Igor kiss at the flight. I'm like, so is this when he's going to text her yeah, and say that this they're is going up? to be when he texts her After while she's she sitting in her back? talking head in her beautiful red dress? She's going to get a text Ugh. and he's going to break up with her. He's going to dump her. Uh, 
amazing. And then it looks like it's probably a producer fake out, but like it looks like Clayton's getting stood up at his wedding. But I feel like Annalie's going to be there. Yeah, I believe they're going to get married. But that would be so funny. Though. It would be great. <laughs> and you would deserve so it. Funny. Sorry, Clayton, if you're watching. Sorry if you're watching. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if he's listening? It would be fantastic. I mean, no offense. No offense. Absolutely none. About your diaper baby pee. No offense. Small- <laughs> <laughs> well, this was really great. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Now, I want to remind you we're going to be back later this week, Thursday or Friday, depending on whether you're a patron, to cover Vanderpump Rules last week for uh, episode one. I think we almost talked for an hour. I know. So, I mean. We're going to get we, into There's a just girl. a lot of stuff going on, and there's mm-hmm. some news that, have, that has come out around <gasps> Vanderpump Rules. So, definitely, if you watch that show show um hang out with us because we love to talk about it and um also watch the episodes if you can before we even talk about it so everybody knows what's going on the content in the dumpster um but until then is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go and like all of our videos on youtube subscribe leave us a good review on your favorite podcast platform five stars please um we really appreciate it we love you very much and until next time never Never forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye.